um, let's look at some of this just from um, this Python experiment. So you can just see what's going on. Um, how how sort of randomness enters into um, Python. So here's a program. So there's a package called random. And so we're importing some functions from this package. And this first line here, just, just going to type, it's going to print um, how many coin flips, because our probability experiment is going to be a flip, a flip a coin, say, n times or five times. And so we want, this is like, we want to see what what the patterns are um, for this experiment. So this is the number of, so then uh, the, our result's going to be here. For the experiment, we're going to do, basically, uh, we're doing the experiment. And if we put in here 100, 1,000, that means we're doing the experiment 1,000 times. So here, we run the experiment over and over. And what we're going to do is tossing the coin is modeled by this function random int. So if we come down here and do rand int one, two, I don't get anything because I haven't um, imported this yet. Okay. Then up arrow twice and I get one. But if I do it again, I get two and then one and then one and then two and two and two. Okay. So I it, you can't predict. It, random it goes into the computer and finds some, uh, you can see over here that it's, it's doing all kinds of, oh, this was the stuff that's in random. There's all kinds of functions built in. Um, we don't have to worry about that. Um, let's see. Yes. Okay. So now let's run this experiment and see what it does is it, it, it um, runs the experiment. And if you get a one, because this, this gives you the one or a two, gives you one that's heads, two is tails and this plus equals is going to add this on so we're going to get a string of the heads and tails um, so if we do how many coin flips let's say 10 okay so after 10 coin flips we get um, we got four tails in a row three heads one tail let's let's do um, do it again and say do a hundred okay well then you can see it's a much longer string a uh, sequence of heads and tails. Let me make this wider. And one of the interesting things to note about random sequences like this is that you've got mix, you've got some things where you just flip back and forth, heads, tails, head, tails, mixed in with like four heads, four tails, three tails, four heads, three heads. So randomness means not only that it is flipping back and forth between heads or tails, but that you're going to randomly have strings of length, one head, two heads, three heads, four heads, five heads, so that you can have really long, um, let's do a thousand, okay? And then see here, there's a really long, long string of heads and tails. So um, sometimes actual randomness is, it gives you patterns that are different than you expect. They're not just we have a if you want if you wanted to write down a series of heads or tails and you you did it sort of according to what you thought a random choice was likely you'd end up with something heads tails heads tails maybe tails and heads heads but you probably wouldn't actually have a random sequence you just have one that was very finely flipping back and forth between heads and tails which is not what the actual random nature of things gives you. So there's there's some interesting questions about what counts as uh, as uncertain, what counts as really random or what patterns to really expect. Okay, so that was our first um, experiment. Uh, that's the first experiment sort of illustrating randomness. Now, the probability model it is an assignment of a number, actually a fraction or a rational number um, between um, 
that's greater than zero and less than one. So it's always going to be like like a, a fraction. Uh, it's never going to be greater than one. It could equal one or it could equal zero, but it could be anything in between. Two, we assign so a probability model is an assignment of a num of a number between zero and one to every um, event that's subset in a um, probability experiment. That is to every subset in the sample space. Okay, but it has to, so that's, so that's the model and it, ha, but it has to have certain, um, um, there are certain things that, that, that make it, um, uh, there are some restrictions. You can't just assign any old fractions to um, the, um, to what's going on. And here's, so there are some things, so for example, the, the, the probability, the number you assign, so it's like a map from say the empty set, like let's do coins, okay? Let's think of a probability model for a coin. Well, it turns out that the probability of the empty set you have to assign to zero. So now the empty set is the event that nothing happened, that you, that you tossed a coin and it didn't cup heads or tails. So the probability that that ha happened is zero. That, that's something that's impossible. So probability of zero means it's impossible. Now you could also take the probability of S, the sample space. This is the probability that it's either heads, that, that the event is, it comes up either heads or tails. Well, you've defined the experiment to be that in which it either comes up heads or tails. So this is one, this is impossible, this is um, certain. So probability of one means it's absolutely certain. You're guaranteed it's either going to be heads or tails. This event always occurs. Multiple events can occur. Um, and then now, but so the interesting ones, of course, are the probability that you have heads and the prob or the probability that you have tails. Now, we could, the, the traditional one, it would be to make, these are called um, um, simple events. The ones with um, only one um, outcome. So the events that only occur one outcome are the simple events. And so we can we should act. We're actually going to be have to arrange that this that the simple events um, uh, sort of determine the whole probability model, because what we have to have is if we have we have E H the union of EH and ET for tails is going to be the whole sample space. Well, we have a restriction on that being one. And so the probability of this is one, but we want to be able to connect that up to this and this. Now you can see also that the, the, um, the intersection here equals the empty set. So the probability of the intersection of E and T is the empty, which is zero. So we know about these, so there's some restrictions on what we can give these. In fact, the restriction is that we, we need the sum of these two, the probability of H plus the, the event that heads comes up, the event that tails, it has to equal one. So I can't just say put nine tenths and nine tenths if I put one half, I have to put one half. But if I, I could put like heads could only be one fourth and this could be three fourths, okay? So, because then one fourth plus three fourths equals one. And so the idea then is that the probability of a union of simple events, right? Is gotta equal the sum of the probabilities for in the union. So here, these are simple events. So I have to have that the probability 
of heads plus the probability of tails equals one, which is because that fixes these two values. Now, they don't have to be equal. This is this would be a weighted coin, right? That it had been physically manufactured to be more likely to come head, tails up than heads up. Um, by by not by somehow making one side heavier than the other and experimenting until you could somehow get this um, to this level, um, and that's and that's possible. And so, however, it's going to turn out that that so there's so there's lots of different probability models you could make by choosing different numbers: one tenth, nine tenths, you know, three thirty sevenths. 34, 37, whatever. Um, but in this probability model, it, there's a special case, which is the classical probability model. Okay? And in the classical probability model, the um, probability of simple events like this one the definition is the probability model, it just requires the simple events are all equally likely. So that means that it's equally likely that heads and tails, but that means that since this is equal, that means that say that this one would, would if probability of tails has to equal the probability of heads, this constraint would give you probability of heads equals one. So the probability of heads would equal one half and the probability of tails equals one half. So your your expectation that a coin will half half the the probability will be one half for each one will um, be is is a part of the classical probability model. Now we're always going to quote probabilities as fractions. If you say oh fifty percent of the time, fifty percent is not a probability. That's a frequency. That's part of statistics. A probability is a number between zero and one, like one half or one tenth. It's not 50% is that's part of statistics. So if you so if I ask you what's the probability of heads and you say 50%, that's going to be marked wrong. Okay? You it has to be a fraction between zero and one. Okay, so it's, I mean, colloquially, you, 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 you are right. It, that's what it would mean. But this is sort of looking back and saying, oh, if, if the probability is one half, we expect that 50% of the time we're going to have um, heads and 50% of the time we're going to have tails. And that is what's going on with this second probability experiment here. The second coins one. In which I don't look at um, the first one, just printed out the, um, you know, the, the, the this range. But here, what we do is we, it's the same experiment, so to speak. But then we keep track of how many heads and tails there are. And if, if it's one, we include one. And then we just print out. How many heads and tails there were, so we can we can do larger numbers than one thousand and see what happens. Um, so if we do the second one and we run that, we can say do one hundred and find out that we got forty three heads and fifty seven tails. And if we um, do it again with the same number, ah, uh, we want the second one there. See, it's, they're different numbers than the uh, we had before, and we can sort of see that. Well, they're not really they're they're there's some for each, but they're not necessarily a half. But then, if we run it again and we put in a thousand, we get four hundred and eighty and five hundred and twenty. Well, that's much closer to half and half, right? I mean, the difference here is the 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 here the halfway point is 50, and this is seven above, seven below. This is 12 above and 12 below, and this is larger, 20 below and 20 above the halfway point. However, as a fraction of the total number, this is much closer sort of 
over a thousand. And if we go up and continue to do this as like 10,000 times, then we begin to get um, numbers that as a fraction of the, as the statistics, 50% of the results were tails and 50% the results were heads. Because here, these numbers are part of statistics. They're what happened after the experiment. So this is this is just a record of the experiment to see what happened, but this is this is sort of the beginnings of statistics. Okay. So that was just to to illustrate this point here. Okay. So at this point, let me 